This week I made sauerkraut. If you're here because you have any concerns about what your sauerkraut is looking like, this is going to be a really great resource because I've filmed all the different steps as I go through, including while it's fermenting across the days. I did have a bit of an issue of my brine disappearing and a little bit of scum. So if you want to know what something looks like, if it's normal or not, just stay tuned and watch through the, the diary. So for the sauerkraut, what I've done here is I've taken a cabbage and I've chopped it up super finely. You can see the thin little slices there. Um, the sauerkraut that I'm making, I'm adding in some hot peppers and some garlic and some onions. Just give it a little bit of a kimchi type flavor without having to actually find all the more complicated Asian ingredients. This is basically stuff that I just had around the house, this is stuff from the garden. And so chopped it all up, I've sprinkled some salt on there, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually hand massage the salt and everything together, which is going to start to release a liquid, which is going to make a brine, and then we're going to pack it in the jar, because sauerkraut's super easy apparently. <laughs> So now that I've massaged the cabbage, you can see that there is a lot of liquid out of here. If I pick this up, it's like it's in a puddle now, which I was shocked. I didn't think it would work that well. I massaged it for about 10 minutes. They say five to 10 minutes is the amount of time that it takes. This was a pretty big bowl, so I went at it for a little bit longer than the five. Um, at this point now I'm going to take it, I'm going to pack it into my crock. I'm going to be pushing it down because you want to make sure that the brine that basically we've just made by mixing it all together is coming up above the surface of the cabbage and then I'm going to let it sit. Okay, so I got my sauerkraut here. This is day two now and it's starting to get some gas bubbling in there. I don't know if you can see see a little bit of bubbles but the it's looking good lots of lots of brine at the top that's what you want to look for make sure that it's covered I used a leaf in here to cover everything up and that's looking pretty good so I'm pretty happy with it the brine has discolored a little bit which you know I'm I'm assuming that's okay pretty normal from the other stuff that I've done but it smells really good. As soon as I kind of come into the, the room here, I can smell it and it's, uh, it's all garlicky and delicious. Because what I did on this is it's not just a basic, it's not just a basic sauerkraut. I mixed in some hot peppers, a little bit of onion, and also a bunch of garlic just to give it a little bit of a kimchi style flavor profile. Just, you know, I, I like spicy stuff, so it's something more along the lines of what I'm interested in. Um, there is a little bit of scum kind of going on in there. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, so, and maybe like on the top of the leaf there, looks like maybe there's a little bit of something sketchy going on. So I will have to take a peek at that when I open it up, but I'm I'm not going to touch anything here. You know, one of the perks of having that leaf on the top is that if anything kind of settles onto the top of it, I can just, when I take those leaves out, those aren't anything I'm going to eat, so I can just throw them away. Um, and uh, from what I've read, sauerkraut is basically like the idiot proof ferment. So even if there is, you know, something that's not 100% on the top there, as long as it's still, still food safe seeming, then, you know, you just kind of pull it out and get rid of it. If there's any discoloration on the top layer, you know, you can, you can just chuck it. One thing I was shocked when I was stuffing this, uh, this crock up because in in the time lapse video that was just two two cabbages worth because filled so much of the bowl I was like oh this is gonna be gonna be more than enough but I actually chopped another cabbage so this here this is three cabbages and I probably could have fit another cabbage in there I was really shocked how much this this um, 
vessel holds, how much this crock holds, I probably could have fit four medium-sized cabbages into here. And this is the five liter crock. So, you know, even if you have the, the two liter crock on this specific brand, you're gonna be able to make a lot of sauerkraut. Okay, so this is day four here, and what is going on now is that I have lost a lot of the liquid here at the top. Um, it also, that little bit of discoloration that was starting up on the leaf, it seems like it's kind of carried down into the, into the sauerkraut a little bit. Um, I still don't want to open this up completely and kind of be poking at it because if there is some scum in there I don't really want to stir it all the way down until I'm ready to, to scoop off that top layer, uh, sorry, top layer and then repack everything. Um, it still smells really good. It doesn't, doesn't smell like anything rotten or anything, but because my liquid is kind of disappearing here, what I'm guessing is, is that I have a lot of the, the gas building up inside all the layers of the, the shredded cabbage. So I'm going to be pushing down on my weight here to try to get some of the liquid back to the top and kind of push some of that air out. It might be a little bit because of the fact that I have basically a seal at the top with those whole cabbage leaves. But you can kind of see in there, you can see that discoloration and that scumminess, especially like over over in that area there. You can kind of see it just doesn't, doesn't look like what I want it to be looking like there. Um, you know, the, I've done a couple of the ferments now, which has me slightly less paranoid about about totally messing them up, but this is also one of kind of the grosser looking things I've seen here. You can kind of see that sediment scum stuff getting stirred up as I'm pressing down, getting some of the air out. Yeah, so, you know, that t it tastes fine. That little bit of liquid that I got on my fingers there when I tried it, it, you know, it doesn't taste bad. But, you know, day four, like I said, I'm going to give this a little bit longer and, you know, just cross my fingers that I haven't messed it up. But, you know, this might be one of those ones where I'm doing a little bit of research, make sure I'm not going to poison myself. All right, so we are at day seven here and this is definitely smelling good. We got some, some extra discoloration on, on there on the top. I'm not super happy with that, but I think I'm gonna open it up and pack it, taste it, pack it into some other jars. And as long as the top is tasting good, I might get rid of like a little bit of this super dark stuff, but I'm probably just gonna keep at it because nothing, even though the leaf, I don't know if you guys can see that, but the leaf has come up out of the liquid and it actually did that two days ago. And even though it's done that, it looks like it's it's been pickled enough in those five days prior that nothing's really happened. So, you know, time, time to pack this up and try it and see how it goes. So here is the sauerkraut with uh, the, the leaf taken off. There's the leaf. You can see some of that scumminess that I wasn't super stoked on. But when I take that leaf off, it doesn't quite look as bad as it did from the side. So I am gonna just scrape off a little bit on the top just cause I'm overly cautious. And then I'm gonna jar it up. And there they are all packed up. I got four liters in total. And this one here is the one that was the, the dark, darkest. You can see it's just slightly more, more discolored than the rest of them. 
but it is looking pretty delicious and tasting delicious too because I've been eating it. What I'm gonna do with this stuff is an experiment. I'm actually gonna store it in my cold storage and see if it keeps nicely down there instead of just in the fridge. Thanks so much for joining me for Fermentation Friday. Make sure to subscribe so you can join along with our weekly ferments. And if you're interested, check out our playlist of what we've fermented so far.